Welcome back to Franco Fridays. It's been a while. Uh, Severn released a couple new Franco films. I'm going to cover one of those today, and that's 1977's Shining Sex, starring Lena Ramey, of course, and Evelyn Scott. Uh, this is a bizarre sci-fi porn film that uh, is right is typical of Franco in that he he really has kind of a non-linear plot. It's much more of a, uh, a visual immersion, if you will, than, than a storyline or a plot per se. There is a there is some story to this, but it's really done through dialogue. Although dialogue-wise, there's very limited dialogue in this film. Uh, Lena Ramey plays a stripper prostitute that gets picked up by a, a, an alien an alien and, and she and her her slave male slave basically go through a series of soft porn kind of torture and uh, stimulation with Lena Ramey all lusciously captured by Franco of course and, and you know he does this is probably more of the gynecological close ups that you see with Franco than some of his other films. This one, this one really, he does a lot of um, gynecological close-ups. He, this one, this is one of the few, I mean, most of the films, of course, with Lena Romay, he spends a lot of time from with the camera admiring her body, but this one, he really, pretty much the entire focus of the film is looking at every orifice of Lena Romay. I mean, up close and personal. Um, it, Apparently there was a hardcore version of this shot, and on the special features there's some hardcore uh, outtakes that you can that you can look at. It's a long film; it's about 140 minutes, um, which I think it kind of overstays its welcome. I mean, I just there's just not a lot there's just not a lot to to chew on with this one. I had I got to be honest; I had a hard time, as much as I do appreciate Franco. And he is a, um, he definitely is an acquired taste. I, I just had a hard time with this one. I just couldn't get into it. Um, I just found it, I just found it uninteresting. I mean, I, I think it is an interesting film. Maybe it's just me. I just, I just had a hard time with it. There's long periods of, of no dialogue. Uh, in fact, there's long periods where there's really no music. The music is very minimalist in this film which is which is kind of unusual for Franco uh, he I, it, it's 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 got all the typical traits of a Franco film but there's some elements of it the, the good elements which is the music and the, the visual style that I think is kind of missing in this one this was this is much more of a it's almost like this was supposed to be a hardcore porn film and then it was edited as softcore uh, and so there wasn't a whole lot of time and attention spent on the visuals or the or the music. It's still beautiful to look at, and Severn's presentation is incredible. I mean, it's a the restoration they did on this is fantastic. But uh, th this one just did not sit with me very well. Like I say, it's a, it's it's a science it, it, basically the science fiction element, which is, which is these two alien people is only done through one or two lines of dialogue. So it, the sci-fi element, and then, and of course there's some, the way they, the way they capture Lena and control her is they use this gel or it looks like uh, uh, sprinkle type stuff, shiny type stuff to put it on her body, you know, that kind of thing. It's just an, really just an excuse to showcase Lena Ramey's body, quite frankly, but the, like I say, there is, there are elements of the science fiction story behind this that um, that are done, but it's very, very minimal. And I don't think Franco particularly was a big fan of science fiction films. Uh, you know, he really was much more of a, just a voyeur. It's just, it's just a voyeur's journey into looking at his uh, soon-to-be wife, you know, Lena Ramey, in every possible way possible. I mean, it starts out. The film starts out with Lena Ramey doing a strip tease, which is that's you can almost predict in a Franco film 
how the first five minutes is going to go. It's it's usually in a nightclub or a strip joint, and it's got someone usually Lena Ramay in some straight date of undress stripping and dancing. I mean, it's it is what it is, you know. Um, yeah, but this one again, I think it just overstays its welcome at 140 minutes, and um, it just wasn't one I was a big fan of. I give it a five out of ten. I do recommend buying it though, because the special features on this are incredible. You've got a audio commentary with the Nashi cast. The Nashi cast guys kind of migrated a little bit from just doing Nashi to covering Jess Franco, and and even they say in this film that the commentary that they 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 they've taken a while to warm up to Franco, but they finally have. That, that they it's interesting. They don't they don't spend a whole lot of time lovingly admiring this film, even though they're commenting on it. Uh, but uh, yeah, I mean most of Franco's filmography I enjoy. There's also of course the land in the land of Franco, Stephen Thrower, going back to the locations where the films were shot, and then there's a 19 minute interview with Frank. Uh, Stephen Thrower talking about this film in particular, and there's out there's the hardcore outtakes which I talked about. Um, Christopher Gans, who's the director of Brotherhood of the Wolf, I think, French director, he talks about Franco for about thirty minutes in the special features. So there's a lot, there's a lot to be recommended in this release, even though I don't think the film is one that I'm particularly want to go back to. Uh, that's, I think that's going to do it. It's kind of a short Franco update. Uh, if you've seen this film or you have that release, let me know what you think in the comments below. Appreciate you watching.